but I feel like having a child ruined my life. Say I am the only black woman in the room, right? And then someone says, yeah, I don't think black women are attractive. I don't think they're attractive at all, but I'm right in the room. Isn't that disrespectful? I was literally giving my all to this job. I was working from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. at this gym. Literally, I was getting up at 3.30 in the morning, working with clients. I would stay at the gym all day because I was told this is what you need to do to gain clients. In fact, I'm completely embarrassed to even be a personal trainer, to even call myself a personal trainer looking the way I do. I think it's so embarrassing to be depressed for myself. I'm not saying for other people, if it's someone else, I wanna help them. But for myself, I'm supposed to be the strong black woman, like the strong woman, you know? My ancestors would be ashamed of me for letting life defeat me for all the shit they went through. Huh, <sighs> this is not an easy video to film, but I got to be honest. <sighs> 2023 was my glow up year and 2024 was my blow up year. Um, I didn't think this year would defeat me like it is, but it has. I didn't see this coming. Once I hit my lowest weight, I never, ever, ever saw myself going back. Never, ever saw myself falling back. But unfortunately that's what happened and the side of weight loss that no one wants to talk about is the mental side and how much life and the stresses of life can really really put a wrench into things oh this is so not an easy video to talk about let's talk about how uh, 2024 happened but if you're new here basically i got into a car accident two years ago um yeah, it was two years ago. Trust me, I hate talking about it, but it still affects me to this very day. I hit my head really hard to the point where I needed to wear glasses. I had a very severe concussion. Um, I struggled with post-concussion syndrome. I couldn't function. I wasn't myself. And for someone who has pre-existing mental health issues to be hit on the head, it makes things tenfold. I lost my way of life. I couldn't exercise. My brain wasn't operating properly to the point where my heart and brain weren't in sync. I had chronic, chronic heart palpitations. Um, I couldn't see properly. I would feel like I'm fainting. I would sleep a lot and I would be up a lot. And not only that, I had a neck injury where I could, it was constantly in pain when I slept. Um, I had a lot going on neck, hip, there's too many injuries for me to bring together. Um, and then I fought through that. I literally said my circumstances won't define me and that I define my circumstances. I had the stoic mentality of I am going to turn this situation into purpose. I'm going to turn into this situation to my power. I was going to use the pain to propelled me to new heights. And that's when I decided to start my OMAD journey. My journey was supposed to be started with fasting, but I couldn't fast at the time because I was getting severe headaches. And I did OMAD for eight months. But through me losing that weight through OMAD, I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> fasting while healing, fasting that intensely while healing, ooh, it, it's painful. It hurt. I would, what I didn't really talk about Maybe I touched a bit on my blogs, but I would fast. And when, basically this was my day. I would wake up in the morning, go to the gym around 5 a.m. Why did I go to the gym around 5 a.m.? Because I couldn't sleep. I saw a heart doctor and he literally told me when you had the heart palpitations, just go to the gym. Because he knew my heart issues was not related to my heart, but it was relating to the signals of my brain. Um, I was in a chronic state of, Basically, the way my body felt, think of someone holding a gun to your head. That's how I felt 24-7. I kind of feel like that now because of all the stresses. And um, go to the gym, do my OMAD, go to my appointments, go to the concussion clinic, take care of my knee, hip, whatever injury I was dealing with. I can't keep up. There's too many. Um, and then I would sleep in the afternoon because I was so tanked. And then wake up, have my meal, repeat, repeat. And that got me to my lowest weight of 169 pounds. And I thought I was invincible. I maintained that weight 
for a good year or so. I would say eh, maybe like a little bit less than a year. And then 2024 happened and that's when things got a little crazy for me. And <laughs> I never thought my life would be this way. Let's just talk about this. I am 35 years old. I did not imagine my life being this way. This is something I'll discuss, but I feel like having a child ruined my life. I know that is a horrible thing to say. It has nothing to do with my kid. It's just all of the circumstances I went through with giving birth, the injuries, the pain. I feel like I've been in chronic pain for the last 11 years, but I'm so blessed in that my child is amazing talk to any of his teachers at school anyone everyone wants to be around him because he's such a well-behaved kid kids these days are brats they're horrible because parents are struggling anyway um with that being said um 2024 happened earlier this year um hang on i'm trying to do a one take here but i need to see myself while i'm talking earlier this year i um we own a condo here in Calgary. We moved from Toronto to Calgary to kind of afford things. And basically, um, someone bought a unit above us. And um, this person was a new, inexperienced landlord. And they had the rent up so high. No one can afford that. That's normal until she got a tenant. Well, this tenant was a meth dealer. No joke. This tenant was manufactured in our building it took us a few months to figure it out now i'm not in i'm not into this stuff i've never been exposed to that in my life this is some rural shit like this is what happens in the rural communities so to come here and be exposed to that maybe that's the wrong thing to say i don't know what happens in the city but come on, labs i don't i've never been experienced i never experienced that in my life even living in toronto where i lived in rough neighborhoods never ever ever and um that was a very very stressful situation there were fumes in our household we would have trouble breathing and because of the laws of this country that our current government have put in place people like this are able to get away with crap like that and it was a very stressful situation my laundry is outside my my uh, condo so i would walk it's just like a few doors down there would be like pipes everywhere there was this one girl two women who were like right in front of my door i was threatened with assault just going into my car because they would their tenant's car was right their parking space was right beside me literally we had all sorts of weird people coming in and out and in and out and ooh, that would put you in severe survival mode and that put a lot of stress on me it was a fight to get them out, but thankfully the person um, who was a part of our condo board, I have to give her all of this thing. She figured it out. We got a bailiff. We had to do this a very legal way because getting tenants out is not easy with all the laws that were put in in protecting tenants. But this person was known to police and it was a very hard situation. So I dealt with all of that from January 2024 to June 2024. And on top of that, I was trying to figure out what was going on with my body. The reason why it took me, it's taking me so long to heal is that doctors can't do their job. Let's be honest. I hate the medical system. I have no trust in the medical system. And I finally figured out what's causing my issues have been my hips when I got into the car accident, that's what's causing my SI joint to act up, being in severe pain. So that happened. Through that, I was getting my personal training certification. I was trying to, you know, I was like, this this the situation is above me, you know, per, prophetic word or prophetic word. What is this? This stupid thing that's going on YouTube that everyone's doing. You know, I, I listen to all this stuff. I feel like it's not helping, but that happened. Um, you know, I'm above my circumstances. Let's do this again. And then I ended up getting a job at a gym and cue in dealing with narcissistic, horrible human beings in a toxic work environment. When I came into this gym, I was incredibly positive because that's who I am. I 
take shit and I turn it into gold. I don't care what is happening. I want to feel joy. My middle name is joy. I want to be happy. And that's my mentality. You know, things are tough, but we'll figure it out and get through it. You know, what's the alternative? I want, I don't want to sit around and complain, bitch, moan and all that. But unfortunately you become the company you keep. When you are around negativity, it kind of sucks in on you. And that's why I hate people. I prefer to be on my own. Because when I'm on my own, I'm not influenced by people. I have a strong voice within that tells me to get through. But then, you you know, you want to be a part of the culture because you're a human being. You want to be a part of the team and whatnot. And I basically sacrificed myself to impress other people. I started personal training at my gym, which was the biggest mistake I've ever made. I loved training. I got into training because a trainer helped me with my pain and doctors couldn't help me. Doctors would be like, oh, just build this muscle, that muscle, but they don't know how to put things together. Basically, when you have an injury, you go through physio. Once you go through physio, you need a structured program that will help your body heal. You need to have a trainer that knows how to do assessments properly, see how your hips are moving, see how your knees moving, see how your body's moving. Um, and a lot of trainers kind of skip this. And this is what happened to me earlier in the year when I was working with another trainer. I ended up getting hurt, um, which is why I started personal training in person. Well, anyway, I started training in person. And the reason why I did this, I was it was sold to me that it would be a mentorship. You know, I was new to training. I wanted to learn from this person. This person was very experienced. And I put out about almost $500 a month. Literally, like 25% of my paycheck was you know, taken away. And I did that because it was an investment. It was an investment not only into my health, it was an investment into me becoming a better trainer. The first couple of months were great. I was gaining clients. I was getting knowledge. I was getting help from this trainer. And then narcissism comes into play or roid rage. I don't know what you want to call it. But basically, when you're training with someone the number one reason why people leave personal trainers is because of their nervous system. If they don't feel a sense of trust and security, they're not going to succeed. They're not going to show up. They're not going to want to work with you. And this said person said something that was really, basically, let's give you an example. Let's say I am the, this is not what happened, but this is a, an analysis. Let's say I am the only black woman in the room, right? And then someone says, yeah, I don't think black women are attractive. I don't think they're attractive at all, but I'm right in the room. Isn't that disrespectful? That is completely disrespectful. Now that is not exactly what was said, but it was something similar to that. And I approached this person and they decided to gaslight me and say that I should not be feeling this way. You literally just insulted me in front of everybody. And my name was brought up. So I was like, okay confronted them, roid rage incident, got angry, couldn't do anything about it, bad situation. Managers told me to delete my training session with the person the next day. I listened to management, I did that. It was a whole thing. And then this person pretty much just dropped me. So I'm like, I'm paying for this expensive training because I wanted to work with this trainer because this trainer had experience and this trainer was good with selling. Well, they screwed me over, over a stupid situation that they were pretty much incorrect with. I tried to like let it go. I didn't even want to confront them in the first place, but I was told to by management. I was encouraged to. I didn't want to. I was going to let it go. But I was not in the right state of mind because I was literally giving my all to this job. I was working from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. at this gym. Literally, I was getting up at 3.30 in the morning, working with clients. I would stay at the gym all day because I was told this is what you need to do to gain clients. And I did it. And I literally destroyed myself in the process. So that happened. And then because I was stuck in this contract, I went to another trainer and this trainer was not qualified to deal with my injuries. Of course, you want to trust your trainer. And I did. And I ended up hurting myself because this trainer had me doing things that my body was not ready for because my body is in rehab mode. I need to rehab my hip my SI joint and my knee joint. I had to rehab that all before I could be doing anything that involved 
certain movements like jumping and whatnot. This is something I figured out along in my journey. So I listened to this trainer being stuck in this contract where I'm paying a lot of money. And uh, this is like September. So September, things started deteriorating. October, things hit ahead. And I was in severe chronic pain. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sit. My hip was on fire. And I was like, I thought I was over this. And of course, when you're in chronic pain, you cannot function. And there I am, not functioning. My mental health went to crap. I was, my financial situation was in ruin. My credit cards were late. I couldn't go to work because I was in pain. I couldn't be my best. And I ended up booking an appointment with my doctor. That takes time. And I found out that I irritated three discs in my lumbar spine. So I not only injured myself, re-injured myself, I made my situation worse because I trusted this trainer. So I was in a crappy situation. Cue in me um, being in that situation. That was not fun. So that's why I kind of disappeared from YouTube. I was going through all of this. And through all of this, of course, I've gained weight. I've been super stressed. Like, I'm not happy with where I'm at. I hate my body right now. In fact, I'm completely embarrassed to even be a personal trainer, to even call myself a personal trainer looking the way I do. And I am so disappointed in myself for trusting people. I'm so disappointed in myself. I literally don't like people. I want to run away from people. But what keeps me going is when my clients see success, when my clients tell me that they've been in this pain for so long or they didn't know what was wrong with this joint and that I helped them. That is what kept me going because I do truly want to help people who want to be helped because I do have a loving heart. I do have a caring heart and I sometimes feel like my heart is too caring for this world, that I am way too sensitive for this world because this world is incredibly, incredibly evil. I'm trying not to play the victim here because having a victim mentality gets you nowhere, but this is the reality. I put myself in this situation and now I have to find a way to get myself out. So I did the unthinkable and I had a cortisone shot in my hip recently, about two weeks ago. So October is when things went to shit. I was barely showing up at work. I had to call in sick a lot. And when I call in sick here, I don't get paid. I don't get any money. So I did all of that and got my cortisone shot about two weeks ago and I got to another trainer started seeing another trainer this trainer started helping me out it wasn't the trainer I wanted to work with originally because this trainer was my old manager complicated situation but they ended up helping me um and things started progressing and then I got but through this all I've been going through a lot like the depression has been bad basically I have been battling every day to survive I'm trying to exist every day um, it's not easy I'm being straight up with you guys mental health it's embarrassing to be depressed to brass I think it's so embarrassing to be depressed for myself I'm not saying for other people if it's someone else I want to help them but for myself, I'm supposed to be the strong black woman, like the strong woman, you know? My ancestors would be ashamed of me for letting life defeat me for all the shit they went through. It's embarrassing. But here I am. So, got the cortisol shot. Now I'm dealing with a really bad flu. I don't get sick. I'm not the person to ever, ever, ever get sick. I don't have such a good immune system. But I'm super sick right now. I've been missing work again because... Of the con this is all leading up to the choice I made, deciding to work with this trainer, trainer screwing me over, had to jump to another trainer, this trainer messed me up, hurt the disc in my spine, and I had to take the cortisone shot because it's cheaper than taking the hyaluronic acid, which doesn't cost any money, but I was in a lot of pain, I had to do something. Everyone's like, don't take it, okay? But would you like me to be in pain? I was back on opiates, I prescribed opiates again, that's how bad it is. So. Here I am right now, it's December 1st, and I'm trying to figure out where do I go. My body's at where it's at, and um, I feel like I am not qualified to be even talking to anybody right now, but this is where I'm at. I'm struggling, and I'm at the point, I'm at a low point in my life, 
and I'm trying to turn it all around. You see all these people on YouTube talking about how they turn their life around, but no one really shows the journey from them actually turning it around. And right now I'm battling. I'm not, I'm not good at all. My mental health is crap. I finally got an appointment with my psychologist, so I'll be seeing her on Thursday. Hopefully she can do some EMDR in me, but she's the only person I'll see. I don't trust a lot of people. I've got her and here I am. So this is where I'm at. Life happens. You know, some people go through some worse things, you know, some people are fighting cancer. Some people are doing this. And I'm like, why am I in this situation? I could be better, you know, but you can't beat yourself up. Here we are right across roads. My channel is now, I don't know, I'm just being honest. I'm going to try to turn this around. Hopefully I do. If I don't, <laughs> it is what it is. But here's vulnerability and this is where I'm at. And this is what happens, you know. This is a journey that no one talks about. Everyone, you know, they want to come back and show you their, their victories. But no one talks about it when they're truly down. And here we are. So... Um, I just want to know, I just want you guys to know if you are suffering, I don't even know what advice I can give in this situation is just take one small step to prove to yourself that you can move forward. Even if it's getting out of bed the day, or even if it's having one healthy meal out of several unhealthy meals, just give yourself that one win. Because what builds confidence is basically doing the thing that you said you were going to do, even if it's that one incremental thing, to turn your life around, you have to start with the small things and be kind to yourself in the process, which is probably the hardest thing to do. Anyway, I'll be opening up a little bit more on some other topics, but if you made it this far into the video, just drop in three white hearts and never give up.